Hi, Kartikeen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. yeah. So, can you tell us something about yourself? Sure. So, uh, I have uh, studied my uh, BE and my schooling in Madurai. So, I got an um, percentage of 70 percentage. Then I started my career as a tester in uh, Chennai uh, in things of global services. Uh, and I worked across like uh, uh, several projects in, in things of and I have worked in like different locations also, also like uh, in Chennai, in Mumbai, and I have traveled to uh, Jordan and I worked as an on-site coordinator uh, over there. And uh, so as a, a tester, I have been involved in uh, both like manual testing and automation testing in things of global services. Mm -hmm. uh, so initially my first project, I started as an automation tester. So uh, where I worked in the uh, QTP uh, tools, right and then uh, after that uh, i i moved to an another project where i was uh, uh, working as an um, uh, like a senior tester where i have to create my own uh, create the own um, automation framework so i did a poc in um, in qtp so that was it for an um, a banking apl application uh, and then uh, so it, it was these were all like most of my uh, offshore activities. So in between, like I had a chance to go to uh, Jordan. So where I worked as an uh, on-site coordinator, and also I was involved in uh, uh, data migration uh, testing over there. The, but that was like very like a short period of time, like for like three to uh, four months. And then uh, so that was my pretty much in things of in offshore and uh, Jordan. And then after that, I had a chance to go to uh, uh, United States. Uh, through uh, things of global services, and there I worked in my first project was in a, was in a bank again. It's it's the bank is like Swenska Handelskan Bank, and mm -hmm. uh, the project was related to the OFAC reports. Again, that was a like a, a short term project for like a, two months, and then from there uh, I I worked I moved to another project. Uh, which is Bridgewater Associates. It's kind of a hedge funds. There, it was like uh, full on full uh, automation testing. There, I had a chance to uh, work in uh, Selenium WebDriver and uh, Maven, Cucumber, Jenkins, like continuous integration. So all those stuffs. It was initially kind of an. Uh, it's it was a new learning for me, mm -hmm. and like uh, we really uh, struggled hard, like around like for two to three months to work in it, and it was very very new for us, mm -hmm. and we started to cope up with that project. And then uh, we were successfully able to uh, do our uh, uh, automation framework uh, that it was in um, uh, BDD framework. Mm -hmm. So that was in Bridgewater Associates. And from there, I moved to Cognizant. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, my, my, my client was uh, UBS. So again, I started to work there as an, um, uh, a manual tester. Mm -hmm. Plus uh, I was, a, I was uh, playing kind of a test manager role where I used to coordinate with different teams, so like across globe. So like one of my teams were in um, uh, UK, another another some some persons were in China, Hong Kong, some of them were in um, uh, India. So I used to coordinate with all these teams, and uh, we do our testing. And that it was like uh, so. Till then, I was working in a kind of a waterfall model, but in that mm -hmm. UBS project, I was moved into agile uh, methodology, and I started to. Uh, know about more of agile uh, processes like the sprints, scrum planning, scrum ops, scrums, all those uh, terms, and it was like a new learning again for me uh, in that project. So it was mostly on collateral management in Chicago. So and after that, inside UBS itself, I had an opportunity to go to go to an, another project, uh, which is related to the AMSAM application, like suspicious activity monitoring applications. Okay. Where again I was. Um, uh, involved in uh, data migration testing. So uh, that was from 2019. So uh, till 2021, I was working in the same project. Again, I, I played a, a test man, I played a test manager role over there. And again, I used to coordinate with like the upstream systems and uh, like different teams across the globe. So that was till 2021. And um, due to my uh, visa issues, I was moved to uh, some other project and I came to offshore so during that period like for around like six to eight months i was working in an uh, insurance project called amgen 
Mm. Uh, again, there I used to. So initially, I was playing an on-site coordinator role, like for three months in on-site, and then I moved to offshore. And again, that kind of a uh, test lead role where I used to manage like uh, a three to four, um, uh, like a QAs uh, in offshore. So again, we followed the agile process over there. And uh, yeah, and one more thing I want to mention is I have worked in like uh, Jira, uh, Rally, and Git in all those tools during the course of these projects. And then after that, I got an opportunity via EPAM to move to the to move to Poland. Okay. And I um, I started working in the same project in which I was working in US, the same uh, UBS client. So mm -hmm. it, till now I'm working in that uh, same project as a test manager. So again, like coordinating with the upstreams. So yeah. This is pretty much my uh, introduction. Yeah. Right, right. So a lot of uh, exposure you have got within India yeah. and outside India. So that's a great thing to hear, right? Yeah. So you have been working as a test manager. So how many uh, people yeah. are reporting to you? Yeah. So, okay. So uh, in this project currently, uh, so uh, I have only one QA uh, within my team. Mm -hmm. So because uh, this project is, kind, it's not kind of a normal project where we have like five to six members and then there is a test manager and he who, who just does the managing role and mm -hmm. uh, like support the QAs. It's not like that. So I have to do the testing also. And then I have to do the uh, test management role also. It's kind of both. And uh, so initially there were like uh, four QAs, but currently there is only one QA. So initially I used to manage like uh, uh, four, but now there is only one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it depends from project to project. Yes. Project fully to agree project. with you. These days yeah. are gone when the, the project managers or the managers are just managing. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Also... And in on set, uh, you know, right. So obviously, so when I play a test manager role, you can't just do a management role. You have to do the testing role. You have to do kind of, sometimes you need to do the BA role also. Yes. So it depends. Yeah. No, no, fully agree with you. Right. So uh, you mm -hmm. were telling about the test automation framework, which you have designed from the scratch, right? You uh, yeah. So that was, um, yeah. yeah, it was around uh, like 2012, uh, 11, 12. Uh, yeah. At those times. Yeah. Right. So what are the different components that you had in the framework? So, okay, I will try to uh, refresh myself because it has been a long time. It has so, been. Uh, yeah, so because, uh, so, okay, when you say different components, mm -hmm. so I see I have worked in uh, both keyword driven framework and BDD mm -hmm. framework. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, take the uh, keyword driven approach is when we say keyword driven approach. So I used to uh, first the object repository. So initially I worked in QTP, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. so the object repository, so that is a different component if I mm -hmm. can say that. And there are like different keywords that we used to maintain for each, say for example, if I need to do an input, I need to uh, mm -hmm. create a keyword for it. If I need to do one, say I need to retrieve a function, I need to, uh, create a keyword for it and like inside that will be like the VB course, right? So mm -hmm. that is one different component. And then I need to obviously generate an, uh, a report. So that will be a, a different component. And what else I could think of? This is what I could think of for now. Yeah. So it has yeah, been a from, long time. Yeah. From yeah. QTP side, that's fine. But from Selenium perspective, they might ask you on the framework level, but as you have got this rich level of experience, so what they will expect is you don't need to create the framework mm -hmm. from scratch. But let's say if any senior team member is creating the framework from the scratch, mm -hmm. then are you able to review that framework or that you should have that knowledge? Maybe sure, they sure. should have reportings, uh, reports kind of a structure. Listeners, they should be integrated. Listen. Then CICD yeah. pipeline should be integrated. Then utilities okay. are there, mm -hmm. windows. Yeah. So those things would be a part of the automation framework. Then programming yeah. language is there. Sure, and sure. Uh, the common code is there right so those things would be there mm -hmm. okay now let me share my screen okay so is the screen visible mm -hmm. now this is a use case that has come up from a customer again you have one client for whom you are working let's take an example any any client for which you are working mm -hmm. they have come up with some feature that they have to develop mm -hmm. so they want to develop a service in which you will be sending below data. So when I say below data, so you'll be sending airline name, date, time, from, to, all these mm -hmm. fields in an via SMS with a keyword. And in return, you will get the availability of flight, whether the flight is available or not, which ticket you can book, which seat mm -hmm. you can book in that particular flight. So these all things would you would get as a part of a response, 
okay mm-hmm. now you are supposed to give the test plan and you are supposed to design the test strategy for this particular feature okay Okay, so in the below data in SMS, the keyword and in return you will get the availability of the flight or you can book a seat in flight. Okay, so okay, so this is kind of an um, uh, okay, it's kind of a mobile testing mm-hmm. and in return get the availability of flight or you can okay, so when we say okay, so. So when we say test strategy, so test strategy is kind of on a above level. It's kind of an organization level. Mm-hmm. So where uh, the most of the, like what kind of testing we need to do, um, what levels of testing, who will be the team. So, so those kind of information we need to provide. So which should not be changed. So once the test strategy is defined, we should not change the test strategy. Absolutely. But test plan is based on the, uh what kind of testing we'll do like what are the features we need to test like estimation all those kind of uh stuffs right so right. should i write the test case right. for this or so yeah so you don't need to write the test case or test scenario you need to tell the test plan so how will you plan the testing so how many resources you will need what would be the scope of the testing what okay. is not in the scope yeah so those all things you will have to decide a service in which you need to send below data in SMS with a keyword. So when you say SMS with the keyword, hmm. so you will send a keyword the... to them. For example, okay. you will so send a data send... like date hmm. or airline, airline name. Okay. For example, you send okay. Indigo, and you okay. send with and a I... date. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So which flights are available for that particular pitch scenario, and is the availability is there or not? All those things you will get in the response. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, so first, so okay. So when we say, when I start the testing, right? So we have to have the like positive one, negative uh, scenarios. Yes. yes. So that is the first main criteria, right? and we need to try to break the system. So Correct. happy path, anyways, everyone can yes. test, right? So, yes. anyways, happy path scenarios will will work. Hmm. So. Um, then when we say negative scenarios, right? Say for example, if I yeah, we can take the indigo example, right? Mm. So only if I type indigo, I have to get the indigo available flights. If I type some other thing, so in mm. IND, if I if I give some other like spelling mm. mistakes, or if I give some alphanumeric characters, I should not get that response, right? Yeah. And also in positive scenarios, also we have to try all the positive scenarios. Like we should not just give Okay, we should not be like very focused on whatever the requirements is. Right? We have to try to provide our uh, like our thoughts. Okay, if you can include these kind of um, uh, like uh, keywords also, so that the customer may use. We, we may not know how the customer would think, right? He may use like different keywords. Say for example, as you said, now you are you are giving me a requirement saying like, okay, I, if I give indigo, I need to get this. If I give like indigo underscore two, I need to get this. But what I'm proposing is, okay, even if I give indigo underscore three, I need to get the response because mm. customer may think in that that perspective also. Absolutely. He may, he may type, okay, uh, uh, indigo space flight or indigo space uh, plane or indigo space aeroplane or indigo space like et cetera, whatever it is, right? So we have to try different kinds of data so that uh, we get the response for each of the data. So those kind of uh, test test scenarios, uh, I would think of. Right, also, right. No, not only on the keywords, again, on the date, time, from, to, everything, right? Even say, for example, um, if I want to uh, search for a particular date, right? So say if I type Indigo, uh, maybe like January 1st, 2023. So when I say January 1st, 2023, customer may type 01 Jan 2023, customer may type 01 2023, 01 2023, 1 So whatever the combination the customer types, he has to get the response. So that's how the customer would uh, expect, right? So all the permutation combinations, yeah. whatever is possible, you have to try to, yeah, Baba. yeah, mm-hmm. get the response. Yeah. Right, right. So from test planning perspective, you would be coming up with few of the test scenarios. Then you will be also defining a document. For example, how much mm-hmm. testing you would do manually, how much testing you would do testing, automation, yeah. how much people would be involved. For example, yeah. two people for automation, two for auto, uh, two, three for manual, similar on similar lines. Then which are the different test environments that you will be considering? Sure. We'll be yeah. having QA environment. We might have staging. We might have development environment. 
after QA signs off, then it will go to UAT kind of an environment and then production. So kind of an environment structure that we will have. Then you will also document which are the things that are not in scope. So for example, here, the things that mm -hmm. are not in scope includes few of the uh, timing related or uh, those kind of time zone related issues. So whenever the time zone will change, let's say it's a CST time zone going on in the US at some times, then accordingly, mm -hmm. those things are there in the scope or not. So we'll be collaborating with the business analysts, mm -hmm. product owners, and we'll be yeah. understanding with them. Now coming to the test strategy, how will you mm -hmm. ensure that the quality is not getting compromised? What test strategy would you like to go for? Okay, so you're asking for this particular scenario or? Yes, in, uh, yes for this particular generic. scenario, yeah. Okay, so test st strategy, basically what it will uh, compress us is, like at least like what level of uh, testing yeah. we are doing, right? So yeah. are we going to do um, uh, only the SAT or are we going to do the UAT like user level testing also? Yeah. Are we going to do uh, like uh, automation, some kind of, so as it, as it says, like an API uh, client. So we need to, we may need to do uh, API testing also. So like, and then for API testing, like, okay, what kind of tools we have to uh, use? So those kind of um, uh, information we need to uh, provide. And uh, like um, in this strategy, again, though, so we need to uh, like inform about the, uh, like we need to document about the, like the stakeholders, like who are all the stakeholders for this, um, for this like particular um, uh, feature. So those kind of information I could think of. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, when are we gonna um, uh, plan the uh, release? What is the, what is the timelines of this uh, release? And then, and then, uh, Again, like what, as you said, like what, what should be in scope? What are the high priority items in the scope? Mm -hmm. And what it is like out of scope, which mm -hmm. is maybe it's not out of scope for this release. Maybe it's it's for maybe for the next future release. Okay, we can take care of these scenarios in, in next release. So those kind of uh, information. And then um, uh, the uh, test approach. So when I say test approach, I think I already mentioned like, okay, we need mm -hmm. automation testing, all those things, I think, yeah. yeah right, right. Uh, and then the release packages, what is the version that we are gonna plan? So yeah, those kind of information, yeah. Correct, correct. So uh, apart from these things, you can also add in the test strategy mm -hmm. perspective that, see, this is an API based uh, testing that we'll have to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you will be, uh, you will be asking your team members to write the API testing scenarios, get them reviewed with the dev team. Maybe have some review sessions of the test cases. Once they okay. are good, then only you can start executing the test cases because eventually you will have to take care of the, you will have to refer the swagger documents or some kind of uh, documentation to know what are the response codes or what are the response messages that we are going to get. Based on that, you can also come up with a requirement traceability matrix, or you can come up with a kind of a traceability between the user stories and test cases, whether all the user stories, all the requirements have been mapped properly with the test cases or not. All the requirements okay. should be covered by our test cases. In this manner, you will have a strategy to cover, to ensure that maximum test case coverage is done. And then okay. you can come up with a, a good quality approach. Sure, sure. Okay, so this okay. was a scenario. Now let's discuss one more scenario. So now what's going to happen? There is a web application on which you are already testing. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have been doing testing and it is uh, kind of a one version is also stable. It is there in production and there are other enhancements on which you are working. Now dev team. So client has got one request for your team and the dev as well that you are supposed to update the oracle version so they'll update the database version the backend mm -hmm. from previous mm -hmm. version to the latest version as the latest version mm -hmm. has got more fixes so dev team will take care of this they'll do the backend changes devops team but as in qa how would you give the test estimation so you are a test manager you have let's mm -hmm. say four to five resources who are reporting to you and you are supposed to give high level test estimation then definitely 
as and when it's an agile methodology so grooming will be happening each individual mm -hmm. tester would be giving their own estimation but you are supposed to give high level test estimation so how would you give high level test estimation okay so this is um, so anyways this version of grades happen frequently so yeah. based on my experience i would mm -hmm. propose an um, uh, estimation mm -hmm. so when we do usually when we do the version upgrade what we do is we do a kind of a regression testing so we have a existing uh, regression test cases which would be done mm -hmm. so maybe like out of those test cases like may say for example 70 percentage is manual and 20 percentage is automated mm -hmm. and 10 percentage is kind of an api testing so these kind of testing we set of test cases we already have right mm -hmm. so that is one one point of view so another point of view is as part of this upgrade what is going to happen so mm -hmm. what what kind of uh, changes are going to happen in this upgrade so based on that criteria also we can select the test cases and mm -hmm. and again so out of those say for example 100 test cases so we need to just have a call with bas or qas ba qas and devs to understand okay these are the usual regression test cases 100 test cases out of this 100 test cases what do you think it is going to be mandatory to test in this like say for example if we have very like crunch timelines mm. the out of this 100 test cases what is the mandatory or high priority test cases which should be executed as as part of this uh upgrade say for they they if they say okay we need to execute all 100 test cases my estimation will be based on that or if they say okay now we'll, let's execute only these 40 um test cases because as part of this upgrade this only, only these going to be impacted many doesn't have that's an impact right so then, then we just have those are high priority then medium one then the low priority test cases so based on that i'll provide the estimation also considering say for example if we, if we have like uh, as you said if we have say or like four or five team four or five QAs with me. Mm -hmm. So based on their capacity also, I'll provide the test cases. Also, as you told, this is this is gonna be the regression test cases. We, we will already have some existing work which you are already we are doing it, right? right? So you have to consider those facts also. Mm -hmm. Okay, if they are all QAs are involved in some testing already. So we need to consider those facts and those elements and then we need to uh, plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So already you have got some work allocated to those team members yeah. and this will be a kind of an additional add -up task that is coming so accordingly you will have to give the yeah. timelines okay now consider there is a one qa member who is reporting to you and mm -hmm. uh, he's not been that much productive let's say out of eight hours been his daily mm -hmm. work but he's not been able to catch up to the timelines he's mm -hmm. running out of the time and his work is remaining incomplete right so how would you ensure that this person gets up to the speed and he is able to deliver the task okay so that is again different aspect aspects right so he may be he may be really not good or he may be really good or he has some personal issues we may not know that so first thing always is it's better to communicate with him Okay, what's your issue? What's the problem do you have? Do you have any like personal issues? Or are you are you not able to cope up with the project? Or is there like anything tough in our project while you're testing? Do you face any issues? Mm -hmm. So that's the first approach I would take, right? And secondly, if he says, okay, I don't have any personal issues, but I'm not able to like understand what is this or, or I'm not able to uh, get, get up with the speed of the testing, right? So one way that I could help him is, okay, have some regular conversation with him, give some proper trainings with him. And if there is any, uh, like, uh, so usually in some organizations, I don't know, in, every, in some organizations, they usually have this testing center of excellence, mm -hmm. where there will be already some testers, like there will be some, uh, like some group, okay, where they have some experienced testers who is doing some uh some activities apart from their project activities they do some activities over there so i can make him join to that group and understand or see you can understand from them also how you are how you can test a particular test case or particular scenario and uh, that is one approach or i can ask him to do some proper trainings like mm -hmm. if you are interested in, okay if you are interested in only in manual testing okay just try to learn some try to start from scratch right okay mm -hmm. learn some domain or learn some functionalities from from not only in inside our project, like try to learn from something from Google also. Or if you're interested in automation, try, okay, whichever tool you want to learn, just try from scratch, right? So whatever is an issue, try it from scratch. That's my approach. And if he needs some help from my side also, I can also like help him. Right. Or if there is any other 
team members apart from him, like that may, be, that may be other team members. So I'll ask them also to support him initially so that he is comfortable. And then slowly, um, he, he should be able to work on his own. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. So instead of, the, that is a saying, right? Instead of giving a fish, try to <laughs> tell him how to catch a fish. So that's how it should be. Yeah. Right, right. Now imagine a project in which you have been you have been moved to work and there is no kind of a QA process over there. People are not mm -hmm. at all aware about the QA things, the software testing processes. Mm -hmm. So what kind of QA process would you implement there and what are the different aspects of a QA process that you will follow there? So when you say there is no QA process, they have not even followed anything at all? Anything yeah, yeah. so till now, let's say they were six to eight months, they were working fully on development perspective. They okay, were development. migrating the code from legacy system to the latest uh, code technologies, right? Now they okay. have started, they have initiated this testing by bringing you to that particular project and they will give you the responsibility of establishing the QA process into mm -hmm. that project. Sure, so what, sure. yeah. Okay, so what I would first um, uh, suggest is, so initially when we are uh, implementing the QA process, obviously I need to know, okay, what are the requirements? What is the existing existing flow? Okay, how they are doing it currently, right? Say, for, as you told, now the dev is doing everything. Mm. For example, he is developing, maybe he is doing the unit testing. He may not do the SAT or he may do the SAT and he may just deploy. So when I have to go and tell that, okay, you are doing development, so you can't test your own code. Somebody else, somebody others, somebody else has to test the code. So in order to somebody else to test the code, he needs to understand. Okay, what's the system? What are the requirements you're doing? Mm -hmm. So initially, I need to, okay, make them understand the 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 importance of the QA over there in that project, and ask. So and, and then I will propose the, okay, we need to have kind of a structure, where first we get the requirements we discuss within our team and then we need to have a kind of a ba process where we analyze the requirements where we 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 like split down the requirements into maybe like individual stories define an acceptance criteria for each other's stories and then start developing over there and from there i need to do an sit if required uat or if required either non for some non functional testing performance testing load testing or api testing whatever it is so we need to follow this kind of process. We need to make the stakeholders aware, okay, this is what we are going to develop. This is how we are going to give a deploy to the production. Maybe before that, we need to do kind of a demo to the product owners or other stakeholders, VAT team, whoever it is. So this is how we need to uh, follow a process over there so that it is okay. We are very sure that, okay, 100% it is tested and everybody is happy with the product and then we are releasing to the production. So it's a kind of a high level. Thing. absolutely yeah sure. yeah so i think a lot of things good good things got covered that there will be a separate environment and then you will be going for sit mm -hmm. testing and all those things then you will have a review kind of a meeting with the client mm -hmm. just to mm -hmm. ensure the product is on place okay great so what is the difference between scrum and kanban can you explain with a practical example uh, scrum and kanban so scrum is basically a so when you say scrum, it's a team. Mm. Kanban is a it's a board. So that's mm. what I could think of because I have not used to this Kanban terms. Mm -hmm. Scrum, I know Scrum is it's kind of a team where we have the uh, the product owners uh, and uh, individual team members, the stakeholders. So that is Scrum. So Kanban is basically the board where we maintain the issues. It's right, a, right. It's a kind of correct? a card. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That you will be okay. maintaining. So let's say if you received five mm -hmm. tickets from the customer and based mm -hmm. on their priority, you will be putting those cards and you will be assigning who okay. okay. yeah, working on that. Okay. Path. Okay. So, we, okay. It's a regular where we go into a startup meetings and kind we meetings. put we'll the cards and, and oh, okay. Yeah. Nowadays, it doesn't happen like that in my yeah. team. So we have a daily scrum call. We just talk over the phone and then, yeah, that's how it, it is. Happens. Because you know, the teams are across the world, right? So yeah, yeah. That, that happens. Yeah. yeah. So absolutely no worries for that. Okay. So Scrum and Kanban is done. Okay. So in your resume, you have mentioned you are preparing daily and weekly status reports. So again, mm -hmm. you don't have to reveal the information. What are you putting? But can you tell on a generic basis? What mm -hmm. what does this report contain? What kind of data information do they contain? Okay, so in the 
in the daily uh, reports right so now i am in a data migration project so i have mm. i have my uh, different upstream systems mm. say for example uh, i get feeds from 10 upstream systems okay mm. so i have to give okay what are the feeds i am testing in that report that's the first main criteria mm. and above that again so what is the release details uh, the when i say so there is a term called qap qap is something with the quality assurance plan details that we provide and then the SGLC details we provide and the change request details we provide and when is the release. It's a high level information on that, on that report. And below that we have the, what are the systems that we are testing as part of this release? Okay, what is the upstream systems we are testing? So we view those information. Mm -hmm. And then what are, now currently what testing we are doing? It's either SAT, UAT, right? Those kind of information we give and then who's doing the testing, which resources doing the testing. Right. That information we give and then, the test cases, whatever the, I mean, the, when I say test cases, the test case count, mm -hmm. what is the count of test cases, how many is executed, passed, failed, mm -hmm. and what is the open defects, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the very important thing. So defects, so that's a very important thing because as we are coordinating with the upstream systems, mm -hmm. so they have their own uh, priorities, they have their own uh, scrums and meetings is, issues works going on so we have to coordinate with those upstream systems and we need to tell okay this is very high priority we need to fix it within maybe 15 days or 20 days within this release mm -hmm. then a few defects okay this is fine we can fix it later but anyway this should be fixed before the release but it is it does it is, it's not very high priority so that you can it can take some time so those kind of information uh it's there in the uh daily status reports and obviously the the timelines so when we need to complete when we need to uh, finish the sit uat mm. and all the teams responsible in the bottom we'll have the uh, team information okay which team is responsible for what so those kind of information we have uh, i think pretty much i covered everything and uh, with more in important document information like what is the where is the requirement documents those kind of the sharepoint details all those additional details uh, i used to have, have it in that report Okay. Yeah, that's okay. pretty much. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. So, uh, Karthikin, I am done with the interview. Do you have any questions mm -hmm. for me? Uh, yeah, I want your suggestion. So, yeah. like, how did I do? And uh, do you have any additional points to suggest? Right.